Life without music would be hell. When I was 14, I was crazy about Louis Armstrong. We sang all his songs. We didn't know what we were saying, but like, hey, why you be dead when you did, you rascal? And I started playing songs. The other guys were, you playing? So yeah, I'm playing. Louis Armstrong sent us his trumpet and we became famous here. We even appeared on the cover of the Farmer's Weekly. Leg boys get Louis trumpet. <laughs> Nobody was really interested in promoting our records because it had an African touch. And Maud Nasata looked at me and said, Hugh, this music will never make it in America. Hugh Masekela, one of the coolest guys you'll ever meet. First thing he does when he meets you, comes straight over, gives you the most enormous hug. After I graduated from Manhattan School of Music, I was ready to come back home then, but my passport had been at the South African Embassy for two years. It was obvious they were not going to like renew it, you know. So I was terrified that I was going to lose my language. I used to have a place in Central Park where I used to go and speak to my imaginary friends. Hey, I'm fun, I get to hold on, what is ruined? And I changed from there to Zulu, to Klausa and what, and then I'd go into like the Tutsi Africans, like, say, my dollar, what say? When Mandela was released, we stayed up to watch, you know, and when he walked out of jail, we didn't even know we were crying. But it was tears of joy because I knew that day that I was going to be able to come back home after 30 years. We played in Detroit. When we started grazing, 3,000 people stood up and started dancing like fools. When we came backstage, I said, Russ, what's that all about? He said, stupid, that's the number one record in the world. <laughs> you play football? I was a playmaker. And my name was Slow Poison, because I always slowed down the play. Every time I caught the ball, the whole place would go, slow. There's no one like you, Masakela. He's got this presence that made us all feel like we were musical for three hours. I was surrounded by so much music and so much fanfare and so much pageantry when we were kids. And it's one of the things that has disappeared from our lives. And one of my biggest dreams is to make this visible again, you know, in great productions. Because when you can see the excellence of a people's culture and their song and dance and design, maybe you'll respect them better when you understand where they're coming from. Mm -hmm.